Hey everyone, this is Amazing Fantasy Football. I am Josh, and he is Chris. That is Chris over there. Um, I almost said it again this time. <laughs> hey, I thought you were gonna. You threw me off. Uh, how you doing today, Chris? I'm doing great. It's Sunday afternoon. I enjoy my Sunday afternoons. It's coincidentally is Valentine's Day. It's, it's still morning, dude. It's still morning. What did I say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um. Yeah, you know what I realized this week, Chris? What? I'm 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 not funny to the young to the young folk anymore. Oh no! Like, yeah, I was talking with uh, my partner in crime at work, and we have students that work with us at work, and uh, they do not find me funny whatsoever. They just kind of stare at me like that's not funny. <laughs> You've lost touch with the younger crowd. It happens. I guess I have. It happens. I, I guess I have. We'll 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 see. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to work on my material more, I guess. Um, maybe not have so many raunchy jokes or something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'll have to <laughs> I'll have to start wearing some tight jeans and um yes. I don't know. De- definitely should do that. That'll that'll make so it more endearing. Constricting. So constricting. <laughs> Anyways, today we're talking speaking about of tight ends. ends. Speaking of tight ends, great segue. Yep, that thing I don't have. <laughs> um we are talking about the top 12 tight ends for the 2020 fa- uh, fantasy season. Um, our number one tight end is of no surprise to anyone whatsoever. Um, it's Travis Kelsey. You know, he's he's the greatest. He really is. Um, there's there's going to be some guys that are missing on this list that definitely could have been on, be, but because of injury. Um, we're looking at you, George Kittle. Uh, yeah, for sure. But even then, I don't think like some people were saying that Kittle is better than Kelsey before the 2020 season started. I don't think so, man. I'm I'm not on board with that at all. Like Travis Kelsey, look at this: 145 targets, 105 receptions. Hey, that's a really great catch rate of for over 1400 yards, 11 touchdowns. You know, like um, did you know that if Travis Kelsey was listed as a wide receiver, he would have been, I believe, wide receiver number three. On the yes, season. and I would have loved to have him on my team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you when you look at it like that, in the sense that like this is how he scored as far as like being a wide receiver, you can make an argument to take him in the first round. Like you're drafting him and expecting that those numbers right there. Yeah, yeah. But I don't see why he outside of injury. I don't see why he can't. You know, unless the Chiefs go out and grab like somehow get like one of the best wide receivers in this year's draft or they spend money on Allen Robinson or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see him. I don't see him budging from this, you know, at least being in that, like maybe not, he won't be the number one overall tight end, but he'll be two, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I I think it's go ahead. I, you know, I just don't have, I don't have much else to say about him because he's the man. You know, I, th- I think it has a lot to do, at least for me, with a belief in the system and the, the coach and the team and the starting quarterback for many years to come. Um, so when you put a and, and then also just his talent um, is is amazing. So I, I like his most comparable player on player profiler is Rob Gronkowski. So it's like it's no surprise. Uh I, think. I guess, but he's but he's healthy. Like he doesn't miss games. And oddly enough, Gronk, we'll talk about Gronk here in a second. Well, it's a comparison well, tool, so it's but, like you have to take yeah. those with a grain of salt, just like we take PFF but, with a grain of salt. But I do like to include him for uh, contrast sake. Uh, but it was a historic season. Uh, going back to the Kittle thing, I think I would admit I'm one of oh, am slash was one of those folks coming into the 2020 season. But I also w- was a person who admit I'm a bit biased. I manage him in dynasty and I'm a Hawkeyes fan. So, you know, um, plus the statistically they were, they were real close. And, and I think we could agree that at least the arrow was pointing up for Kittle in terms of, we kind of knew what Kelsey was. Now I think Kelsey took what we thought he was and kind of just raised it a level this year. So uh, to your point, I think it's, it's probably him and then everybody else until Kittle shows something in terms of having historical season like this. Um, he's not bad. Uh, Kelsey's not that bad at run blocking either. Uh, he was 90, 93.8, uh, offensive, you know, tight end rating for PFF and 77.2 run block, which is not bad at all. Also, uh, can you tell me off the top of your head? Does that 11 touchdowns include rushing touchdowns? 
No, it's just. Receiving. Oh, you know what? Those are all catches, aren't they? The ones, the pitch, the pitches, where he runs the quick uh, inside end if, around. If, it's, if the if the ball is moving forward, yeah, it is considered a it is considered a pass. If right. it goes or behind, it is a pitch. Right. I should I should edit my notes then, but I did put that they're good. I, each of them, I put that the uh, Chiefs have a great outside inside presence with Kelsey and Hill. Not to mention each gets a handful of rushing uh, touchdowns per year. But again, those are included in the receiving statistics. My bad. But it's still kind of an added bonus. It feels he'll, like he'll you know the, he'll actually gets manufactured unquote, touches. Rushed. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Rush. Yeah. Travis Kelsey. Not so much. The only negative I anyway. put would was uh, basically echoing what you said. Uh, target competition. We could see an upgrade at one of the receiver positions, uh, but I think Hill is elite, and uh, I think they work great together. So we'll see. But that's they're, the only they're, negative. They're, they're they're a really great complement to each other. With Tyreek Hill mm -hmm. being the super like the quote unquote small, really fast guy, and yep. Travis Kelsey being while he's not slow by any stretch, he's just the big over the middle guy. You know, yep. possession uh savvy route running size because there's something to be said in today's nfl for uh the big guy barreling at you you know uh as yeah. opposed to well, I mean, a, a running back coming out of the backfield yeah, it wears you down you don't, as a defense. you don't really want like a five uh a, a five ten tight end you know that's a no that's a really small tight end no. yeah it's a physical um, it's a physical style of football is what i'm getting at that's yep. what kelsey does yeah yep uh let's move on to number two here number mm -hmm. two is darren waller um, you know, this, uh, some of this might've just been because Kittle got hurt, but I mean, he only, he's only f about 15 points behind Kelsey. So that's, he had, and he had another, and he had one more target too. Um, it's just a difference in yardage and a small difference in touchdowns. He has, um, a little over 200 yards less than Kelsey at almost two, uh, almost 1200, you know, nine touchdowns. I, I think if you know, and his ADP was sixty-one. It's it says here. So, I mean, I, I feel like if you if you drafted Darren Waller you're in what is that like the fifth round or something like I that? Um, sounds right to me. I, I think you're I think you're pretty darn happy with him. You know, yeah. there was um, he did have five games in double digits, or I'm sorry, in single digits. But I mean, with anyone that's not Travis Kelsey, I think you're going to be taking some lumps uh, and uh, in certain weeks. You know. Mm -hmm. Also, when you have Derek Carr as your quarterback, you're going to have there, there's your handicap right there. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't really don't have much else to say about Darren Waller, to be quite honest. I, I thought I did. And it just it's he's good. He's really good. I think he's um, I don't know how people are going to uh, view George Kittle next season. Mm -hmm. But as far as like where he's going to be drafted. But. Yeah, Darren Waller, he's I don't know if he's I would I don't want to take him any earlier than the fifth, though. That's that's the problem. I, I agree with Just you because on... because mm -hmm. Derek Carr is the quarterback. Exactly. You I know? agree with you on the fifth being fine, being good. Anything you know after that is bonus round, but I'm not taking him earlier. I also agree. I think you kind of touched on it about coming into the 2020 season. I think if we have a healthy Kittle, I think it is these three guys. However, with hindsight, uh, with 2020 having played out, uh, I think Kelsey is obviously in a tier of his own. And the next tier is Waller and probably Kittle, assuming we see some positive training camp, et cetera, news about uh, his health. Um, but you have to have that asterisk on Kittle at the same time about injury prone. Um, but again, I think there's oh, an oh, obvious yeah. teardrop. Kelsey's in a tier of his own. Going back to Waller overall, I love rooting for him. Uh, the path he took to get here is inspiring and relatable for many folks out there struggling with addiction. Uh, at first, when I saw the nine touchdowns, I thought almost half had come in one game. Uh, I was dead wrong. Waller spread his touchdowns out nicely throughout the season uh, in weeks two, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, and fifteen, while putting up epic target numbers such as uh, seventeen in week thirteen. Seventeen targets. Uh, this guy's one of my favorite guys, but I am never. Uh, willing to pay up for him although going back to that fifth round price i think we can agree that that's becoming worthwhile to me also um waller and kelsey are a mile ahead of everyone else in pff rating uh waller had an 88.6 yeah. and then it's just like in the 70s after that and a lot of those are these kind of one drop in the pan kind of backups had an efficient mm -hmm. run uh so almost no name guys if you will um so okay. it's it's kelsey and waller there in that ranking I think um, that it's 
Okay, so you and um, just about every fantasy football league, you have to start a tight end, right? Yep. And I think with Travis Kelsey, Waller, and also I'll throw Kittle into that conversation too. Don't think of them as tight ends when you're drafting them. Just thinking, of, just think of them as wide receivers you can put in the tight end slot. I mm-hmm. think that's the way. To, I think that's kind of the way to look at them and to view them. Because if you're having a tough time swallowing the pill of taking Travis Kelsey at the end of the first, beginning of the second, just be like, well, he was. If he was, if if that was a WR in front of his name instead of a TE, he would have been wide receiver number three this season. You know, like yeah, that sort of thing. Like, just don't think about it that way. Think about points overall and that you're going to get points with those three that positional advantage that value you're getting out of that one slot that you slot in your position and he is like a slot receiver especially waller i mean they run their offense through him a ton obviously kelsey Uh, the rest of these guys that we're going to talk about today they're 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 tight ends you're gonna and moving forward to i got so I, i did a lot of comparisons of like guys that got more than 50 yards in a game but didn't score a touchdown sort of thing Hmm. because I just all these other all of these the rest of the names on this list are touchdown dependent tight ends. They are. They're. Yep. Uh, I would generally uh, generally agree. Uh, there are some guys that you get, you see some good target numbers, so you see some good usage. You see the team wanting to use them, but you're still you're still uh, as you kind of put it, throwing darts. You're speculating. You're you're trying to yeah. catch the next guy that's going to score nine to eleven touchdowns or something like that, and it's tough to do, but. Uh, I think we did a good job of finding some uh, some spots that you could look there. Right. Uh, let's move on to number three here. Number three on our list and number one in Chris's heart. Heck yeah. It is Robert Tunyon. I love this picture of him too. Um, yeah, this is me. I mean, if you, okay, so go flashback to Darren Waller real quick. Mm-hmm. Let's Let's do this real quick. Darren Waller, he scored 225 fantasy points this year. Now flip over to... Tunyon, 150, mm-hmm. 75 point difference. Wow. Wow. Like, and this is number three, not number, not number four or seven or 10 or yeah, 12. Yeah, we're not, we're not, <laughs> yeah, we're not bouncing from number two to number 10. This is, I mean, this is a huge disparity here. Like, I, he got that. He got there with you know eleven the, the touchdowns. That's how he got there because Obviously. he only has fifty two receptions and five hundred eighty six yards. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, the the one thing I will say about Tunyon is that his his catch rate was ridiculous. Fifty two out of fifty nine targets. Like, eighty eight. Aaron Rodgers was on fire this season, and Tunyon was part of it. You know, mm-hmm. I I want to say I hope he has staying power, but Aaron Rodgers is has has proven time and time again that even though he has a a, a player like Tunyon that can really do something mm-hmm. uh he doesn't have the greatest history of producing year in and year out uh fantasy relevant tight ends let's put it that way you know i i think i'm going to be skipping robert tunyon next season i i don't know man i just because of that because remember that one year it was Jermichael Finley, and then the next, and then the next season it wasn't Jermichael Finley, <laughs> and then it was they had Jimmy Graham for a little bit. That didn't really work out. I just, I don't know, man. I really, I want to go back know, and look man. at the Graham season. I feel like he had one good year, but I might be wrong. I know he was decent last year in Chicago, but that's neither here nor there. Um, uh, I, it's. I don't know, man. It, it's his it's his first season over a hundred yards. That's Robert Tunyon. That is mm-hmm. over a hundred. That's it. Every other season, he had like three or t- three or less touchdowns. It's only his third season, but still. Yeah, I think he got a more or less a red shirt his rookie year. Maybe like I think he missed a whole year due to injury. He had, he had next to no production in his rookie year, and even last year though, or that would be twenty nineteen. Didn't do much. Uh, it was kind of a down year for Aaron Rodgers. It was still a good season for him, but it was kind of a down season as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know, man. I, I I wish I could say that he had staying he has staying power, but I don't think he does. I really don't. It just I, I disagree. I think he does. Um, so you're gonna draft Robert Tunyon as the tight end? Well, the, my, the my third, very third first or fourth notes, tight end off the board. My 
Uh, well, I don't know about that. I don't think he'll be drafted as such, especially if you throw Kittle in the mix and some other names we'll talk about today. But uh, uh, that's what my note, first note says. I'm curious is where his ADP ends up come draft time because I hope to see a value. I worry that I won't, uh, to your point, that the price might become too rich where the risk is just I could just pick another guy off this list uh, or, uh, as we said, dart throw earlier. But assuming Roger plays nice and stays in Green Bay, uh, competing for titles, I think Green Bay may have found their tight end. Uh, I think Rodgers will use a good tight end, but I don't think he's had much since uh, Michael Finley's flash in the pan. Uh, so the big elephant in the room here is, you touched on it, the uh, 59, um, 59 targets uh, is, mm-hmm. is, is the lowest on this whole list we're going to talk about today. Uh, and the fact that he had 11 touchdowns and those will be difficult to repeat, if not statistically improbable. However, uh, look at the efficiency, as we just talked about, cash rate of 88%. Now, we obviously understand that he has a lot of target uh, competition in Green Bay. Um, Does he, though? I mean, he's got... Well, I mean, I think uh, coming into the year, we didn't think the Green Bay tight end was going to be, what, second in the pecking order? I mean, you got to understand how much Adams commands, you know? I know, but I'm just saying, like, like 150 does, targets does every year. I, I mean, does he though? Does he really have that much competition with uh, Devontae Adams? He's going to get his ever, after that. Who's his competition? Well, I think like, Lazard uh, was banged up, and I think that had a little bit to do with Tanyan's r- rise. Um, and then I, I'm not a Lazard Scantling, believer. Valdez Scantling can be, uh, you know, the definition of hit or miss. Um, but I did For see sure, even Val- if you hit Valdez him, you <laughs> yeah right, but uh, but like schematically and the sit like uh, the system that they run, I feel like it features the receiver more, and I also feel like schematically in terms of matchups, they must have seen something at least in that playoff game where Valdez Scantling scored what two touchdowns, and had big play after big play. It seemed like so, I think <sighs> Rogers is going to find the open guy, but I think Tanyan, uh, I think his season speaks to you know the fact that it's his third year and he went through injury and still stuck around speaks to the fact that they see something in him and I think it's athleticism size and obviously receiving chops so I, I'm a big fan I just think it, it's it's a it's a good a dart throw as any because it's in the Green Bay defense uh, I'm sorry Green Bay offense despite the historical kind of narrative of Green Bay tight ends <laughs> All right, let's let's move on to number four here, which is TJ Hawkinson. Um, this is our first Iowa Hawkeye alum on the list. I, as they've now calling it, tight end U. Tight end mm-hmm. U is now what they're calling it, which uh, can't be yeah. wrong. I mean, you got Dallas Clark, George Kittle, Noah Fant. Um, there's a couple others that are have kind of flashed but didn't quite pan out. Sure, um, sure. Anyways. I don't know. I mean, I, I think we can almost throw out everything that Hawkinson has done at this point through his career because he's now getting Jared Goff. And, you know, like 101 targets. He's going to get 101 targets from Jared Goff next season. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't... I, I really don't know. But they don't have they, they They only have one wide receiver going into this 2021 season. They have TJ Hawkinson. That's it. Obviously, they're going to add people. They are going to. But I don't know. And I don't know what Jared Goff's going to be like either uh, in Detroit. I, yeah, I have no idea what he's going to be like. But I do know that I held out faith a little bit at the beginning of his career, especially after that nice uh, uh, run. Uh, the 20, he, like the 2019, 2019 season. Yeah, he 2019. Was, yeah, he was efficient. Yeah, um, he was great at play action. Yes, you needed a you needed a good team around him. But you can say that about 98 percent of the quarterbacks in the NFL, dude, like, you know, seriously. everyone needs a good team around them. Like, exactly. that's how teams succeed. You don't succeed by having a bad team around yes, you, you know, yes. and, and and you you become a great quarterback by being a manager of person. You know what I mean? Like, that's part of it. You work with you spread the ball around anyway. So he looked good that year. I'll, I'll admit it. But obviously, I was still trepidatious because he'd shown me some other things. And then it all went down the toilet. That's this last season. And he is on his way out of L.A. So I agree with you that this is and this fact that he's at four on this list is a testament to his talent and uh, you know mm-hmm. having a healthy Matthew Matthew Stafford for a portion of the season definitely not the whole season Stafford was banged up again um, mm-hmm. but otherwise yeah this is a complete wild card it's just 
Yes, he's worth a dart throw because there is talent there, and we assume we'll see some volume. But you take away the outside threats of, you know, Galladay's gone. Yeah, sure, there's Jones, but he's not a number one. He's uh, not under contract next. The running game season. has been historically awful in Detroit. Uh, you know, I like uh, who's the kid in the backfield in Detroit, Swift. Mm-hmm. I like him, but I don't know what to expect in front of him as far as an offensive line or other playmakers to take pressure off of him. And then you throw a player like Goff in the middle of that. No, man, I'm 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 out. <laughs> I, I I'm worried, very worried. Uh, but I like the player. He'll be on my radar. I just don't know where to put him until I start seeing some ADP and some. Uh, draft and free agent decisions come through um do you know where detroit's offensive line ranked as according to pff i would assume like 27th <laughs> uh bad. incorrect sir oh 13th 13th wow i stand correct yeah it? yeah like it, it was a Didn't it was they draft not a, a bad, really it, great guard at, i think they drafted yeah a really um good guard. rag now rag now thank you yeah. got it before i did um, or you knew it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not a bad offensive line. I thought that Stafford was going to, because I was doing research for our next episode. Um, I thought Stafford was going to a a from a bad offensive line to a bad offensive line, and not really. He's going from a, an okay offensive line to a pretty good one. To PFF, a good one. They're gonna the Rams have to let's let's table that talk for our our offensive line show. <laughs> sure. sure, I don't have much else to say. Um, he uh. The one thing I do, the one thing left I have to say is that Hawkinson did have six games over with over 50 receiving yards without a touchdown this season. So he's not quite tight end dependent. Uh, t- uh, touchdown know? dependent. He's not touchdown dependent. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. He is tight end dependent because he's a tight end. He's depending mm-hmm. on himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I put just at, uh, you know, 66% catch rate. Not yeah, great. That's, it's, I mean, I could, I don't know, man. I, if kind you're catching two thirds, two thirds of your balls thrown at you and, and like, here's the thing too, about I mean, targets, it's targets that, that it's a really flawed stat is targets is more Come like on. the ball was thrown in your direction. So what is true, that? true. It's a big, it's a big uh, indicator for me in terms of especially fantasy. Cause sometimes like we're talking about with tight ends, I'm just looking for a guy getting dir- look, people looking his direction. That's all I'm looking for. For sure. For sure. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I sure. mean, but like when you get 101 targets versus 67 receptions, it's not the how many of, the of those were actually ta- t- catchable, you know, like mm-hmm. one positive I mean, I put you, is maybe he ends up becoming a value because he gets like a young rookie quarterback coming in and exploding on the scene. It's happened. We've seen it happen, but I'm not holding my breath. You know, it's not something I can, can draft on. You know what I mean? I have to wait and see. For sure. Let's move on to number five here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Number five is Mark Andrews. Um, He only had one game this season with 10 plus targets. Yeah. Um, Going right back to what I was saying about targets. (laughs) I don't like that. Yeah. When I see that. Um, He did have 88 targets in the season and he was, I mean, this is how bad tight end gets here. Like I just, I don't know, man, Mark Andrews. And this is where it is just, I don't know if I want if I'm missing out on the top tight ends. I'm I think I'm just waiting on tight end in the in a draft. You know, it I was, just I feel like every uh, August that's kind of the discussion that comes up in in most fantasy shows is if you don't get one, two, or three, uh, or in this case, don't, over, yeah, you just you just punt, you just wait. You don't don't try and get four, five, six, or seven. You know, try and get the tenth or twelfth tight end off the board. You know, because. Yeah, Man, 701 yards, seven touchdowns, and, you know, everyone thought that, and, and maybe Mark Andrews can actually bump, bump, has room to rise next season, and I think he does, mm-hmm. but Lamar Jackson has got to pull it together, and some, of, and some of that is the offensive line and in Baltimore, and, you know, the team figuring out how to kind of utilize the weapons they do have, but I don't know. Mark Andrews, I think if he fell far enough, I think I, I think I would take him because I think he this is kind of a low point for him. Absolutely, it could it could end up becoming a value. You can get more receptions, maybe not more yards, but more receptions and more touchdowns. Yeah, boom, right there, man. I'm I'm d- I'm down with it. So it suddenly becomes a value. Yeah, yeah. I've got the just another sixty percent, sixty six percent catch rate. 
Uh, and his season was definitely disappointing, but I hold faith that Lamar can put together better seasons through the air in 2021 and moving forward. Seven touchdowns isn't bad by any means, but I think uh, that is why he's this high on this list. Like he just happened to pull in seven touchdowns, uh, but I, his it, touchdown totals and his fantasy floor will remain unpredictable until we see more consistency from mm-hmm. Lamar, like he showed towards it, the end of the season. But yeah, you know, I guess I can I afford will, to be I will a say, fence I will rider too, right that, now. Um he did miss a couple of games too. So that that's, there's a caveat in there of, you know, that's probably why he didn't end up as number, you know, three or four is you missed those two games. I believe he had COVID in weeks 12 and 13. It's okay. very possible because I think everyone on the Ravens had COVID. And it seemed like Lamar was kind of heating up right around that. Uh, yeah. Time frame. Yep. I, I don't know. I mean, he's just uh, the only problem with him is that, and this is what really hurt uh, fantasy managers here. He had six games below five points, below five points. Yeah. Yeah. That floor was scary that's, low. Yeah. That's, that's pretty bad. So for a guy yeah, that I mean, you paid up for that, most people paid up for, for what the sixth round, like maybe the, the third or fourth tight end off the board, something like that. Yeah. And he is a good player. I don't get me wrong. So. Uh, uber talented. We're just, a little trepidatious about he Lamar. Is, I just, uh, I, I'm a little yeah. more on the positive side with Lamar, but I don't blame folks for like you for being worried. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to see better. Yeah, let's move on to number six here. This is I, I, I like this guy a lot to be honest. Uh, number six, as you can see, is Logan Thomas. 109 mm-hmm. targets from was it three different quarter, four different quarterbacks? I think it was three. Wow. Um, 72 receptions, six. I mean, you get you get this guy some consistent quarterbacking that's actually, you know, okay. Mm-hmm. Um uh, I think he can end up a lot higher next next year. You know, I just maybe Logan Thomas should just be his own quarterback and throw the ball to himself. There you go. Yeah, he was through the roof and <laughs> passer rating on a on on PFF. I've got that in my notes. Uh, um, but yeah. I, I mean, the the Washington Potato Skins uh, really need a quarterback this season, this next coming this this come. Uh, can't talk this coming season. Sorry. Um, and this is gonna and the and they have a a decent team around that to they just need a quarterback. They're kind of like the Colts. They really just need a quarterback. You know, they they've got a number one receiver in Terry McLaurin. They got a, a nice tight end option with Logan Thomas, and Couldn't agree they more. got Couldn't agree more. Yeah. They got Gibson in the backfield. You know, mm. I believe their offensive line isn't that bad either. So, man, you know their defense is good. This team, they you get a good quarterback in there, and in the what has been the last couple of seasons, a really bad NFC that they they they, they could run the division for a couple of years. Sure, I I, mm-hmm. I agree completely. Now I think we have to remind ourselves that's a big question mark at quarterback. Like I'm an Alex Smith fan and I think he could manage a team well enough, but we don't uh, know what direction they're going to go. He could not be healthy. Obviously uh, Haskins has been ousted out of town after, you know, they paid up for him a little bit. I don't know. Their record wasn't completely awful. So I don't know where they're picking. Uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah keep talking. I'm gonna look that but up, you're actually. right. One vet, one vet free agent, good veteran free agent quarterback away or one, surprise rookie away from being right back in it uh i would lean the veteran uh way because of uh, uh ron rivera's tendency uh to prefer veteran quarterbacks uh and again i think you just you have a better chance of finding somebody who can compete and help a already what we both agree are a talented team uh going to logan thomas specifically um, I did put he's kind of a surprise name here. Uh, I'm sure many have overlooked Thomas last year at draft time. He is coincidentally the second undrafted guy on this list so far. Uh, kind of an average in PFF ranks across the board. 65 on the and offensive I, side. I like... Go ahead. What's up? No, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying uh, kind of a- average on the PFF ranks across the board. 65. Uh, offensive 64.8 in the receiving category, uh, except passer rating where he excelled at 79.9. <laughs> I think he, uh, well, I know he was an ex quarterback and I think he threw, <laughs> I think he threw a touchdown this year if memory serves correctly. Yeah, he did. So his rating is just through the roof. Um, really, I, I love it. <laughs> wouldn't feel comfortable giving up draft capital for this guy till I see who the quarterback is going to be basically just what echoing what we were already talking sure. about there. And Washington is because they won the division mistakenly. 
they are drafting 19th. In yeah, the first see, that's round. what I thought. I thought it was, I, th- I definitely thought it was the later half of uh, the 30, 36 picks, yeah. 32 picks. And, 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 to be honest, if I was the if I was the Washington football team drafting the season, I'm not paying. I'm not trading up for a quarterback. Just I agree. I think the veteran one. route is makes more sense for them, especially sitting at 19. Yeah, maybe you can get um, Andy Dalton or Jacoby Brissett. I or like both something those like names. That. I love both and those then, names absolutely. And then um, and then draft a project quarterback. You know, maybe. You know, maybe yeah. one, neither one of those guys aren't very good, and you have to go to this project quarterback. He ends up being good for you. You're like, just don't trade up for a quarterback, Agreed. Washington, please. Keep it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even mind like a pick. second, or th- second or third round round guy to compete with. Yep. Name name your free agent. Yeah, I like that. Insert veteran. Insert veteran. Yeah, he veteran. does really yes. like. Uh, is it Kyle? What's the last name? Oh I yeah, can't... Kyle Allen. Allen, thank you. That's yes. right. I forgot he does about really him. like him. I forgot about him. Now, I'm not saying yeah. I, I would I, think Ron he's Rivera, not the I don't answer. know if you want to die on that hill, man. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, I could be wrong. Ron Rivera could be right. I don't know. But I, I think he just likes him in the quarterback room. Pardon me. I think he likes him in the quarterback room. I think he likes him as a number two. And I think he might be one of the better number twos in the league, to be fair to the guy. I don't know. I could be wrong. Let's move, let's move on to number seven here. Let's do it. Another one of my guys, if memory serves. Oh, yeah. Number two in Chris's heart and number seven <laughs> on our list, Mike Gesicki. Uh, uh, you know, he didn't have a bad season. It was like a, like all these tight ends on this list, except for the top two. Um, it was, You had to roll some punches with him. Um, I, I Forgive me. I did not look at his comparison of how he did with Tua versus um, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, I didn't, he know did the season with, I didn't have enough time to look at the week's by week comparison. I, of I, com- I completely missed. spaced it. I just, I just now thought of it. I'm like, Oh man. Anyways, he did end up with 85 targets and 53 receptions, 703 yards. That's, that's not bad right there. Um, I'd like to see more than six touchdowns though. So, sure. and this was one of those guys that I know I was targeting in drafts last preseason because yeah. it was one of those like well i missed out on the good tight end so i'm just here's one of your my, punt options I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw my dart and hope that it, it hits you know yeah. mm-hmm. um i don't think i ended up drafting him in any league i think in one league you actually sneaked them from me and yep. i cursed your name for it <laughs> and he was pretty so, reliable yeah for sure so if you end if you someday start getting really thin that's that's me sorry um stephen you know. king novel anyone <laughs> richard bachman technically Oh darn it! Sorry. It was it was his pen name. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Name. Uh, yeah. Um, I just put uh, a couple things. Uh, another guy I'm hoping can put together a good career and help bring more value and depth to the position. Um, young, talented, athletic. Uh, just one of the guys I'm hoping kind of help uh, the fantasy tight end position. Um, and then going real quick back to the slide. Uh, just sitting here looking at it again it's just his the target numbers for uh tanya to really come out sorry to go back to a player but i mean no 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 that's cool 50 i'm sorry 59, 59. yeah and versus, then every 100 versus the, 88 even even andrews who we were critical about 88 targets that's not bad. 109 that's 109 amazing. from logan tom well a lot of that so a lot of that's alex excuse me yeah. a lot of that's alex smith yeah just so. to kind of put those several uh half a dozen guys into perspective there um Gasecki, uh, I think he'd only get better with more consistency at the quarterback position, both in terms of who is in there, <laughs> decide on one mm-hmm. guy, and of course a second year from Tua, because I think he will be the one they're going to go with. Um, I guess Fitzpatrick is on to greener pastures. We'll see. Uh, I also believe Fitzpatrick has never been one to prefer the tight end. Um, I mean, I guess I was no, one... not really. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of critical of that narrative when it came to Rodgers and Tanyan, to be fair. I guess I'm cherry-picking a little bit, but I worry that Fitzpatrick won't feature the tight end very much at all. Um, And I think some of the numbers line up. However, I didn't have a chance to parse through the exact uh, individual games who he played with. Um, uh, However, he was... Uh, Who? Who's that, Fitzpatrick? Who's Gusecki quarterback was in each game, because I forget. Oh, yeah, I I really should have. We're this far past, you know, the end of the year that I kind of don't remember off the top of my head. Um, However, I I didn't analyze that part just because I wasn't sure. Um, His value was buoyed by an early out-of-character high target and yardage game. Uh, That was Mm -hmm. 11 targets, 8 catches, 130 yards, and a touchdown. Then kind of disappeared in the middle of the season. 
Yeah. Uh, the encouraging thing is the production uh, he saw at the end of the year, which I can almost guarantee was large part with Tua. Uh, again, I think they want him very involved. They need an elite level athlete. His best comparable player is Vernon Davis. Talk about an athlete. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, he's, he's a really good athlete. He's, he's big, he's fast. Um, I remember when he was playing at Penn state that Iowa had some problems guarding him. You know, he's, uh, he's, uh, his, elite it's level unfortunate athlete, that, uh, very much so. It's mm-hmm. unfortunate that he kind of landed in Miami with, um, you know, like you mentioned, Ryan Fitzpatrick, not exactly featuring the tight end and to, uh, I know we have an episode coming up that you want to talk about Tua, but I sure. really do. I do. I do not know if Tua is the answer in Miami. So, and it's so early. I couldn't blame somebody for still being uh, uh, skeptical, um, or even I'm somebody skeptical. Being, I'm being... skeptical, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna like, um, you know, plant my flag and declare Tua a bust either. Right. Yeah. Skeptical, I, but 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 hoping. I think I'm best, almost so. right there with you. I think I'm just more in the positive side of to well i think i know i am because i'm higher on miami in general and it would be hard to get another guy in there uh, you're a miami that, fan that's fine no it's cool yeah it's cool. i'm, you're I'm a becoming one fan. quickly um you are you grew up in texas so you've just been pretending to be a cowboys fan but you're really like you know you're old enough that dan marino was your favorite quarterback it wasn't you know uh, I did really yeah. enjoy watching Marina, but he is not my favorite quarterback. Coach. See, I told you, you it's just ironic are that you a say that. Fan. I think a lot You're of a Dolphin fan. I think a lot of kids Episode nowadays title. forget how Episode good he title was. Right now, top ten tight ends. No. Chris is a Dolphin fan. <laughs> Last thing Revealed. I had a couple things out on Gasecki was sixty two percent catch rate is is not good. But uh, remember, we were trying to figure out the t- uh, 2020, 2021 tight end landscape here and find value in the mid to late rounds at a position. We have to take our right dart there. throws and athletes like this are the type of dart throws you take hopefully For tool sure. works out hopefully tool works out yeah i'm gonna try and look this up while we're talking so whatever let's move on to number eight which is number zero in any of our hearts Gronk. i don't know i'm not a big i'm not a big grunk guy um it is rob gronkowski um you know like i'm surprised he was drafted so high at 81 to, uh you know that's name value uh, it is name value, but for a guy that retired and then came back out of retirement, I know he retired kind of young, but you know, um, only 77 targets and 45 receptions. Yeah. It's going to get ugly from here on out. Again, folks. less than Tanyan. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. 11, 11 touchdowns to do that. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of the difference between these two is that uh, Gronk had, about a hundred more yards than Tunyon and, but four less touchdowns. And I, I believe there's only a 24 point difference there between like, cause Tunyon was like at a buck 50 and this mm-hmm. is, buck and, 50 Gronk scored right. a, yep. and Gronk scored 126 points, almost 127 on the season. So that's, mm-hmm. you know, 25 points, um, give or take. Yeah. That, I mean, it's not that big of a difference here. And, um, a lot of, you know, preseason, it was a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen as far as tight end in, in Tampa with yeah. Cameron Bray uh, and mm-hmm. um, what is it? Uh, what is his name? Is it O.J. Howard? Uh, OJ, OJ and, Howard. And Gronk. And then we lost um, O.J. to injury, yeah. We lost O.J. to injury. I really thought that it was just because everyone's going to be like, is it O.J. Howard? Is it Gronk? Is it O.J. Howard? Is it Gronk? I'm like, I'm going to plant my flag on Cameron Bray and it didn't pan out, but whatsoever uh, brain is still uh, a team favorite they, they definitely still used him he's he's a locker room guy i hate to use that f- catchphrase you, you really but, like uh, that phrase is that the, that's like the first time I've said it. anyway continue. i'm gonna i'm gonna make a bingo card of yours of your famous catchphrases and yeah and, I, and, 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 and one episode you're just gonna hear me yell bingo and you're gonna be like and i won't tell you what the phrases are until i get a bingo and one of these days, you'll 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 find out. You get six. Across, I'm gonna do this. Six cliches across. <laughs> Gives you. A I'm gonna go. Bingo. I'm gonna I'm gonna do like a three or four narrative card. bingo. Like, <laughs> bingo. No, yeah. No, it was it was an actual saying, so it'd be cliche, not narrative. Narrative is a thought. Yeah, if you will. Anyways, anyway. um, uh, Gronk he didn't really top ten points until week six. It was kind of a bit of a slow start. He did have mm. ten games less than ten points. And one of those games, he goosed you. So there was some problems with well, there was some problems having Gronk on on your fantasy team this season. But mm-hmm. 
I mean, like all these tight ends, I think at this point, this is definitely the the line that where you're kind of rotating tight ends for sure. Like these guys are, you're not probably not Huge starting every question week. Marks absolutely, Huge um, except marks. for the last, except for the last guy on our list, which we will get to, and I have some love to talk about with him. Hmm. So, okay. I don't really have much else to say about Gronk. Yeah, um, I didn't put a lot on Gronk. Just that, yeah, I think he said he wants to come back. Uh, as long as the tight end landscape is in disarray, uh, he, he will probably have some value. It'll be around this um, era in the list, but it's just a matter of catching. Half a dozen touchdowns really is what it comes down to. If he has a chance to do that, he'll be, yeah, yeah, he could be a tight end one again. But I, I don't like him very much. I just think there's too many. He's getting older. I do think there's many too many cooks in the kitchen with at tight end. I think really? you see a healthy OJ Howard. I think he came into the year expecting to play a role, and he played that role well. He's not, he's not a uh, Travis Kelsey anymore. And he knows that, and we know that, and the offense knows that. So they look for opportunities to get the ball in his hands. He's got, still got size. He doesn't, you know, you don't have to practice mm-hmm. size. <laughs> and if you he can stay in, in it, it, stay in reasonable enough overall football shape, which he showed this year, you know, with management of snaps, he can do it. Uh, then yeah, you have to at least keep an eye out for him. But otherwise, yeah, I'd like to look at a younger upside play if I'm going to go and punt at tight end. That's what I yeah say. I don't know I mean I was I was sorry I was looking up OJ mm-hmm. Howard's uh, contract situation here. It's got to be getting close. Four year. Uh, was yeah, he first he's, round he's pick? The, he, he's, he might have a fifth year. Yes, option. he was. Yeah, he does, and he and they picked it up. I guess which why I don't know. I they could ease. I mean, it's only it's only a six million dollar cap hit, so they mm-hmm. could easily just cut him too. I don't know. I mean, you know, Gronk's not going to play forever. I I don't know. It, the, the team has never really used OJ Howard all that much either, so it's just it's only that's million, the frustrating guess, part is we still. assumed OJ Howard was just going to take value away from Gronk. Howard goes down, we're like, oh goody, and it's still kind of like still kind of a platoon yeah. with Brait. I mean, just the kind of sapped value from it. Although obviously Gronk ended up placing it was well, I mean, it was it was the same thing decent. with the tight ends with the wide receivers in Tampa Bay too. Is that is you mm-hmm. kind of never knew which one was going to go off in any certain week there is no i mean maybe someone smarter than the two of us can make a it can could make some sort of algorithm to figure it out to predict it but right man i just you just by looking at it you, it was very hard to parse out what was who was going to actually be the, the relevant pass catcher in any given week with tampa bay it was I think I think unless unless there's uh, the dust settles and everything, I think it's going to be for next season a situation I'm going to try and avoid again. I would I would tend to agree uh, because I watched you with Chris Godwin and other people with like Mike Evans and it just oh man it was a mess. Yeah, yeah, Godwin. It was a, fa- it was a fantasy mess. It was great. One. It was obviously they won the Super Bowl, so it was a great it was great for the Bucks, but it was a fantasy mess. It was. And it was. I don't want to clean up that fantasy mess. And I did have to deal so, with it with God when I can own that for sure. Well, I mean, doing, doing you know, just doing matchup breakdowns for him too is just like banging my head against the wall. I'm like, which one is it going to be this week? I'm trying to, I'm trying to be right, you know, yeah. obviously. Much less trying to deal with an aging Gronk and a AB, aging. Uh, and Tony Brown coming in. Yeah. Uh, so we're on to number nine, which is number one in my heart preseason, Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst, everyone. Um, I really liked him preseason because it was kind of lazy analysis of tight end Matt Ryan gold. You know, mm-hmm. um, it didn't really work out so well. I mean, he ended up as the number nine tight end on the season, but 88 targets, 56 receptions, 571 yards, and six touchdowns. Not all that great. I mean, he's only what. Uh, roughly 30 points away from being tight end number three. But I just, I don't know, man. I was hoping for some more consistency, some Tony Gonzalez, Austin Hooper, whoever that other tight end that I keep forgetting what his freaking name is Al-G somewhere Cooper. in the, uh, no, no, too far back after Tony Gonzalez. <laughs> yeah. Way too far. Um, the, the other tight end that was there after Tony Gonzalez. Um, I I'll look it up one of these days and, and remember it. But yeah, Matt Ryan has a big, a very good history with tight ends. You know, he 
focuses on tight ends. Um, makes him sound like he's looking at their butts, but you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, I really thought he was going to be good and he didn't start out at all that great. I kind of stuck with him maybe a little too long. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think Hayden Hurst can have a better season moving forward. It, it is what Hayden Hurst only that we just got done with his like third season in the NFL, I think. So yeah, yeah. there's him and Andrews came in at the same for, time. I thought it was a year before Andrews. Um, I, I think it was the same draft. You think so? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And, uh, Hayden Hurst oh. is a bit of an older college player coming out. Cause he had, uh, I think something to do yeah, with injuries so. and or he played a different position at one point. Anyway, I just distinctly remember him being a little bit of an older product coming out. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, but they were drafted by the same team, same draft. The Ravens in yeah. 2018. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's, it's one of those things like, Three yeah, years. he could easily be, he could easily be, um, I, I could see him moving up this list. I don't know what's going to happen with Matt Ryan and the Falcons. Mm-hmm. They have a completely new coaching staff, which I think is maybe for the best. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if, if Julio Jones can stay healthy. Uh, what happens with Calvin Ridley? That's my only concern with Hayden Hurst is sure. a healthy Julio, a healthy Calvin Ridley, and where how many targets is he really going to get after that? That sort of thing. Yeah, and and Matt Ryan's Matt Ryan's a robot, and he just yeah, I, I don't know. I, he, has, I would, he has he has problems improvising. It. Let's put it that way. Yep, yep. I'm not very high on him, but I would assume Atlanta's going to try. Uh, I don't know how you put it. Reload, if you will. Like I think, uh, assuming they, you know, they still have the talent. You can plug in a different running back because Gurley is going to be out. Um, the receivers are obviously elite level. Matt Ryan can definitely get it done. Obviously, defense oh. is a big question mark. But uh, what's up? I just thought of something like you was, like they need a new running back. What about like Aaron Jones to the Falcons? I know their offensive line is not good. Um, if they're going to try but, and win in the next couple of years before the whole thing falls apart, like Matt Ryan retires, et cetera, then yeah, I, w- I wouldn't mind a, it's an, it's a front loaded deal two or three years. Isn't almost every down back, you know, absolutely. I would consider him might, more, might need a little bit of a thumper to go along with them, but passes out of the backfield amongst, amongst the league's best. Uh, as far as yeah. I'm concerned, and Matt Ryan can throw to the running back quite well. Uh, like how we just turn this into Aaron Jones talk. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, but you know, as far as Hayden's individually, uh, I guess I see Atlanta trying to compete again next year, even with a new staff. Meaning Julio stays oh, yeah. put, Matt Ryan stays put, really stays obviously really stays put. They're um, they're not they're not moving they're not moving Julio or Matt Ryan. I don't even know if they could if right. they wanted so, to. So That's I would thing. I would lean a bit more on the positive side if I were to if I knew that was going to happen uh, that I could see have the Atlanta offense of old. I do think it was a little bit disappointing when you talk about expectations for Hayden Hurst this year. Uh, worth mentioning, his run block PFF rating is absolutely awful. <laughs> At thirty and a half, I just no. He, that, that yeah, was no. He's he's he is a receiving he's a pass guy. catching. He's a pass catching tight end. He is not a, yeah. a do it all. He is not a he's not a blocker. I mean, you can kind of teach those things, but mm. he, I don't know if he's going to be seeing the field every single snap. He was actually pretty reliable, but he did have a scary low floor uh, for a handful of a couple of games there that kind um, of he, was. In weeks eleven, mm. he goosed. And thirteen and fourteen under two points, you know. I, I mean, like, but after that though, like fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, I believe those are Julio list games. He oh, had a touchdown okay. in every single game. Nice. So yeah, yeah, had a nice little streak there. Um, and I just put yeah. that I kind of I worry that the offense could be unpredictable or in flux. But as I just kind of said, I, I I would if I had to choose now, I would lean behind, but but I would lean towards Atlanta kind of retooling just. Not changing per major personnel, moving forward, Matt Ryan, Julio Ridley, and perhaps Hayden Hurst, and trying one more time to put up some numbers and make the playoffs. Uh, so I think he's got to be on your radar, but uh, I don't know. 88 yeah, targets, six touchdowns, saved his season, really. They got a rough road ahead of them. They're trying to make the playoffs with the Bucks and the Saints in front of them. Good point, good point. And even even the Panthers like that's so it might be the better football decision to tear it down. In the, in which case, I'm obviously I'm out on her. I don't think they're going to though. No, I don't, I don't either. They're... I don't either. I don't either. I just and think maybe, maybe it would be the better decision. 
maybe at this time next year we're going to be talking about that as more of a realistic option but this but 2021 i think they're going to be moving forward with the exact personnel that they have agreed just overall let's move on to number 10 there's changes every season but overall i agree yep no they're not going to change at all literally everybody one more year let's do it let's run it back (laughs) uh let's move on to number 10 number 10 on our list and number two or three i don't forget what number we're at uh in chris's heart yeah there you go um is johnny smith uh this is gonna be that can't be right at all um look at the he has 119.7 fantasy points and that was also his adp too what a coincidence yeah josh didn't do that right (laughs) uh he ended up with only 65 targets 41 receptions i don't believe he's he did get eight touchdowns that's really what helped him because he only Mm, had 448 yards i don't believe he's under contract with the titans this uh moving forward and i think he needs to go elsewhere and i think the titans would be smart to not resign him I think I kind of agree with that. Like, I really love the player, but I think both for I the, love player the player and too, for but the I, team. I, yeah, I think they're going to yeah, like. But with with uh, Ferkser there and Matt Ryan has a, a, seems to have a thing for Ferkser. Johnny got hurt a little bit mean, this uh, season. Tannehill. That, Tannehill. You said Matt Ryan. Anyway. Yeah, whatever. Sorry. Yeah, more or less. Same guy. Matt Ryan, Tannehill. I don't know. <laughs> they're both quarterbacks, right? Um, sure. Uh, they play for the same team, too. No. Uh, anyways, so Johnny missed a couple of games with injury in, uh, you don't know. Yeah. There's another, he started out hot out for sure. He started out hot. He had, uh, three of the first four games over 11 points and he averaged 15.28 points per game in those games. But, and then he played 10 out of the, the 12 remaining games, but he averaged 5.86 points in those games. Hmm. So, yeah, not good. Not good. Yeah, it was disappointing. Um, I just don't I don't know if if everything stays the same uh, in in Tennessee. And as far as they the Titans keep Corey Davis, they keep Ferkser there. They still have A.J. Brown, right? A.J. Brown is his I name. Yeah, I didn't screw that. OK, good. Um and yeah, I just I don't know if there's room for John U. Smith there. I think that with the guy that has this kind of athletic profile, he would be better off going to another team that might focus him a little bit more. You know, maybe a I don't know Arizona Cardinals or something like that. Just pulling a name out, out of out, out of a hat. hat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I basically echo the same thing. Uh, just target competition is the name here uh, for John U. Um, however, uh, he is featured in the end zone as evidenced by his eight touchdowns. Um, and we are, mm-hmm. again, we are in the meat of the dark throw territory. Again, athletic profile has to be mentioned when it comes to these guys, especially these red zone guys. So he is on my, if he were to stay in Tennessee, he's still on my radar in terms of his athleticism and his red zone presence. However, he's <laughs> way down the list. Um, but, uh, yeah, I like the speculation of him going elsewhere. We won't get too far down that rabbit hole, but. I agree that both from a individual a fantasy manager perspective and a team perspective, it kind of makes sense. I don't think they want to dole out a lot of money at the tight end position at this point, where given that they paid Henry and Tannehill. And again, sure. uh, and I think it's important to, to mention Corey Davis at some point. Yeah, at some point, exactly, coming up in the next year or two. Um, and then Corey Davis is perhaps the best, what, top two or three, number two wide receiver in the league, right? I mean, he's, he's really good. I think it's important to mention that because – yeah. He had had a negative uh, kind of tag on his name there for a couple of years because of his. Uh, I think, and I think stop. part of that negative tag was that he was drafted he first in round the first pick. round. Yeah, and from if a, he would have been like a third or too. fourth round, uh, yeah, East Michigan, I believe, um, Eastern Michigan, whatever they're called, one of them, um, Western Michigan. I'm pretty sure it was Eastern Michigan. Up, down, left, um, right, Michigan. I'm not sure, but it was that. You're right. It was one of those. It was definitely in the lower part of Michigan. He was not a Uper. Um, which is people that live in the top half of Michigan, if you didn't know that. Fun fact of the day. There we go. What? Upper Peninsula. Isn't that what it stands for? The upper? Uper? Yeah, 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 they're they're called Upers. That's what they call themselves. Anyways, good blue, good blueberry country up there, apparently. Um so that's been our Michigan talk, and we're out. <laughs> okay, uh go go visit the upper peninsula of Michigan. <laughs>
beautiful country up there right lots of blueberries maple trees anyways um i don't even remember what we were talking about now. Janu. oh cory davis going, if he's oh, cory davis right. Janu's fan um I don't know if the team's going to want to pay Corey Davis, though. That was, I was know? just saying, like, now definitely his contract needs to probably be up. He's been in the league for a bit. He, it, it, it is up. So both of them up. are up? Well, that that's, again, yeah. just another huge question mark down here. We can't, you know, till we How see some remember free agency. These things, How do I remember these things? I don't know. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> um, but you know, I'll come yeah. full circle back to the athletic profile, and I know touchdowns are hard to repeat, but if you see him go in a destination where there's targets and the opportunities go up, Sure, you could absolutely see touchdowns go up, but uh, eight, there's nothing. A uh, eight touchdowns is a decent season, and he it uh, is. That's why he's at, at this point on the countdown. But it's hard to predict those touchdowns. Let's see if he. Uh, let's see if they don't pay Davis. Hey, man, that now you're talking. If, that, if that's exciting to me, now I don't know if that makes real life football sense in terms of schematically. I think you'd rather have that outside presence. But uh, I do like Johnny's athletic profile, and I think he's a, he's could be a great player given a different opportunity. Yeah, hold on one second. Before we move on, I just want to see what Ferkser's contract situation is. I feel like he's young, um, only second year maybe, but I'm not sure about that either. You are... Oh, he's a restricted free agent. Could have been um, undrafted. Signed a two-year? Yeah, know. it looks like he's he's almost... You know, he's got a, he's got a birthday coming up here real, real soon. Um, he, He'll be 26 here soon. A little bit older than I thought, at least in age. I still think he might be a second-year player, third year maybe. I don't know. Uh, he was undrafted in 2017. 2017. So he's been with the Titans for five years, five years. So he's only played for the Titans and his contract huh? is up, it sounds like. No, he was undrafted and then got signed by the Jets and then the Chiefs. Oh, wow. And then five years in Tennessee. Yep. Wow, I didn't know he'd been in the league that long. My bad. All right. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know either. He played well. Okay. Well, that's been I don't know. I, I like Ferkser a lot. I just he's definitely a thorn in Janu's side, that's he is. for sure. He is. And until we see something change with that, like Janu go somewhere or something happens. They, the or, they could, or they position. could dump they could dump Ferkser and I think I think the thing with Ferkser is that he's a better blocker than Johnny. Oh so, see I was just gonna I was wondering about the opposite. I was gonna say I wonder if he's if Johnny's an elite level blocker because of his physical presence. I don't think so. I think he's more a pass catcher. Uh let's move on to number eleven, which is I don't know. He was number one in my heart about six or eight years ago. Ten years ago? No. Six or eight years ago. It's been a while. It's Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham. So fun fact about Jimmy Graham, him and Gronk both uh, burst out in the same season. Chris, I know you know this story. Of course. But I I drafted them both in the same uh, preseason fantasy draft. And at that time, ESPN wouldn't allow you to start two tight ends, which you can now do. But I couldn't. You couldn't start a tight end in your flex position. But yeah, the flex didn't include the tight end position exactly. Exactly. And then next year it could. And so forever and ever, I will never allow this to be in my fantasy leagues. The one that he because I, I because I am bitter <laughs> and holding a grudge. Anyway, so Jimmy Graham. But you got to realize, 11. I mean, these were historical tight end seasons, folks. These were like seventeen touchdowns. Yeah, 18 and or 19 and I touchdowns. and I got them and I got them in like the twelfth and thirteenth round. It was ridiculous. And you held on to him for quite some time. Then I think you finally were able to deal one or the other. I think it was. I traded Graham. Gronk. I traded John, Gronk for okay. um, Chris Johnson's two thousand yard season, I believe. Wow, I think so. Took you a little while Maybe to it was get rid of him, though. Uh, yeah. I feel Anyways, like I don't. I don't know. So. Anyway. Jimmy Graham did play in, in every game this season, but he did have two goosers, and but it, he also had six games over ten points as well. So that's good. That's not bad. Um, the problem with Jimmy Graham is that, and I noticed this in research for next episode, is that he was really only on the field for at most about two thirds of the snaps. He was not. He was not playing a lot. Uh, yeah, a lot of snaps. Similar story with Gronk. Older dudes, bigger dudes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I got written down here, too, that he naturally could have had a better season with a better quarterback. I don't know, though, because when I started looking at those snap counts or percentages, I was like, you're only on the field maybe like 50% of the time. So, just opportunity. Well, he's, yeah. 
He still has know. a little something to say in the. Uh, it's a very similar example. I just can't keep help making the correlations, but uh, on the downside of his career, bigger guy still has something to say when you start getting in the twenty, uh, not between the twenties, but in the red zone. You yep. know, because he's got size and he's got uh, j- uh, veteran savvy, and can win those matchups sometimes. Yep. And you're, it's kind of like you know, fifty percent. It's not bad if you're if you're pulling fifty down fifty percent of those. YOLO red zone balls, then hey man, we 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 we've got sure. something we can work with. But otherwise, I don't trust the quarterback, don't trust the offense. I'd rather look in a different direction. Uh and we'll see where he plays football next yeah. year. If he does. I mean, that's um, about the end of Jimmy Graham as far as I'm concerned. Fun that's fact about really Jimmy negative. Graham before, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Fun fact about Jimmy Graham before we move on is that he has a rare no trade clause in his contract. And it's rare for tight ends to have that. Let's put it that way. Sure. So the Bears can dump him. He has one more season left in Chicago, too, according to his contract. Um, Sounds right. He was doing the two years. I know all. I know all this for research for next episode. Good. Uh, anyways, so yeah, it's I don't know. I think Jimmy Graham's probably going to retire after his contracts up with the Bears. Maybe yeah, he won't. And he, I and think he, he will. very well not be on this list next year. So it's just uh, very wait, easily. Wait and see. Not a big fan. Loved the guy in the meet in the. Uh, uh, in the Saints days, yes, in the Saints days, the the good part of his career, uh, big fan. I was on him early. Uh, obviously, you you won that. Uh, I was a little too early in a different league. Let's put it that way. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, let's move on to the last guy on our list here, and this is our second Iowa alum here, and he is Noah Fant. Go Hawks. looking pretty serious there too. Yes, he is. Um, there. So Noah Fant, he missed a couple of games this season, and really he could be much, much higher on this list Three if he would have been healthy. Uh, well, some of that was quarterbacking because there was that infamous game where they didn't have a quarterback, um, literally. Yep. And also, I believe it was in week four, he sprained his ankle, he missed a game because of it, and he was never the same afterwards. Why do teams do this, man? Why do they do? Why do they let their players who sprain their ankle come back too soon? You would have thought that after watching Alvin Kamara and was it Saquon also yep. mm-hmm. that did that? I think in the same season too, like two years ago. Sounds right. Like, why do they let players do this? If you're not, yeah, okay, great, you can go out there and everything, but you're not actually letting your your ankle heal. So therefore, you're not giving. You're giving 100% effort, but we're not getting 100% of your physicality and your ability. So uh, maybe you should just take take a rest. I, I assume fan. medical staffs uh, says you can't do any more damage, and the personnel decision says 77% of Fant is better than XYZ. I don't know. That's my best guess, but I agree with you. They should just. I don't know. It. I mean. Especially in a year when you're having some really subpar quarterback play too, what what's the, you're not why playing bother? for the playoffs, so mm-hmm. so why bother? Like make him sit and just be like, dude, just get healthy, you know? Yep. yep. You're, get healthy, you're, you're, and you're, you're in our future plans. You're not in our mm-hmm. 2020 immediate. plans. Uh, yeah, yeah. Immediate plans. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, and and I also have written down here that according to RotoWire, he was. Uh, playing through an injury all year long, yeah, like no doubt, dude. Of that's course. Right. In fact, in fact, that's that's a positive as far as I'm concerned because you couple that with the questionable quarterback play, and was, uh, I still believe in the player is what I'm getting at. You know, he's yeah, still... it was week three because I have written down here that he was averaging 16 points per game in the first two weeks. Yeah, it's only wow. two weeks, but hey. And then after that, it was 7.82 points per game the rest of the way. It was not very good. Also lost Locke for a, at least one game. Uh, for if, several if he's the end if he, he is even at least with Locke, you know you've got a live arm fantasy perspective at least you know he's gonna he's gonna he's got a big arm but he's yeah well, i know i know, I know. For yeah. he's he's gun shy i think i don't know it's, oh, is it's he? weird okay. to watch uh, it, yeah more. he's 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 really conservative he's short past probably coaching like, staff can... in his ear because they know that i guess gunslinger and will give the ball away probably but let's hey, let's hope he can he can show us something next year, um, and that would be great for fans' fantasy value. But uh, I worry about his quarterback situation. Let's just hope he can uh, be healthy and maybe Locke can play reasonably well. Otherwise, yeah, hopefully he rises on this list because the Hawkeye fan in me wants to see him do well. I and think maybe, I think he will, and maybe he's, I, he's not. I can he, find he's a value not too. An all- He's not a complete tight end like uh, T.J. Hawkinson in the sense that he really can't. Um, you can't block very well. Yeah. yeah. 
He's he's a pass catcher. That's it. Through so. and through. Yep. Remind um, me of the Shannon Sharp what, days in Denver. Do you do you have an honorable mention here that like maybe a guy you want to talk about there, Chris? Uh, do I have an honorable mention? Oh yeah, yeah, I definitely do. Um, I'm kind of putting an asterisk here. Um, I think they're going to have him back. Uh, it's Blake Jarwin, uh, for the Cowboys. Um, mm-hmm. this is kind of the low hanging fruit, if you will, cause it was based entirely upon injury. Uh, uh yeah. I think it's first two weeks of the season. Uh, if I recall, um, and, and it's kind of two injuries too, because even if Jarwin would have stayed healthy, he'd have lost that got hurt. Yep, exactly. So uh, that's kind of why um, I came full circle back to low hanging fruit. I was like, well, on one hand, he lo- he missed the entire season due to injury. On the other hand, Dalton Schultz flashed a little. I mean, a, a little. Like he looked decent, but again, we lost the sure. starting quarterback, so that has a lot to do with everybody's evaluation. But keep an eye on Jarwin. I think he's still the. Pre- preferred answer at tight end for the Cowboys. That's a team I follow closely. I'll keep an eye on that for uh, during free agency, but I'd like to see him get another opportunity in 2021. And if he does, I think we can all agree that the uh, Cowboys tight end position is a valuable one. Uh, it's a volume offense. They like to throw a lot. If, if Dak gets his money, if Dak gets his uh, leg healed up, which has got a little bit of a question Didn't mark they- on it. Didn't they give Blake Jarwin money? Like they gave him a contract. Yeah, I think they? they, I think it was a relatively Short deal, like two years, maybe. Don't remember. Last year would have counted it uh, against that, I think, two or three. So, mm-hmm. He, mm-hmm. point thing to remember: he's still in, uh, under contract next year. And the other important thing to remember is you're right; they did invest a little bit in him. Uh, nothing too crazy, uh, but then again, they didn't have to. But uh, he's definitely showed some playing uh, playmaking chops down the seam. So I'm excited to get him back in there. And I don't think they make a move there for the reasons we just named, uh, if he, if they do, obviously things change. Um, but otherwise I think he's a great honorable mention. My honorable mention is, and I am, this is a bit of a cheat on myself because he is actually the number 13 tight end on the season. It's Hunter Henry. Um, he got hit 93 targets from dang it. It's not Joe Burrow. (laughs) I always want to call him Joe Burrow. He's not Joe Burrow. (laughs) It's Justin Herbert. Um, the only problem he had, he had 60 receptions, so he didn't have an extremely great catch percent, uh, catch rate, but 613 yards, not great, but not terrible, but four touchdowns this mm-hmm. season. That's why Hunter Henry didn't make our list. Uh, I, I, if he does stay with the chargers because he is a free agent sure. this season, once again, still don't know how I remember these things. Um, I, you know, if he does stay with the Chargers, yeah, I think he'll be great. You know, I think he's he really kind of fits what the Chargers do, or he did with Philip Rivers at least. Um, he does have an injury history. He did miss a couple of games this season as well. Uh, I believe, I believe he missed a couple Sounds of games right. this season. So Keenan was more healthy this year for sure, but I think I, I for really sure it was one or two maybe. Um, yeah, great That's player. Okay. Uh, I think it's just, just chem- chemistry thing with the rookie quarterback. He missed the last two games of the season. I was right. Okay. So yeah, that's what, that's part of the reason why he's not higher on the list. Kind of like with Mark Andrews, he could have been higher, but he missed a couple of games. I think other than that, like, I think that was really the only two guys that had injuries on the list. Everyone else just, you know, kind of pooed themselves a little Underperformed. bit. Underperformed. Yeah. Because, because they're tight ends and tight ends. And that's what they tend to it's, do. It's not, it's not 10 years ago when tight ends were, you know, the, the bee's knees. It's always been so. one of my favorite positions. I, uh, that's why I lament about the current state of fantasy tight ends, but I did. Hi- we, we did highlight a couple names. I'm hoping can, uh, raise that, that bar, uh, and particularly fan, like we were just touching on fan for sure. Hunter Henry, um, even, even Jarwin. Jarwin. I think John is just a matter of situation. Just holding him back. Um, yeah, I would like to see those guys kind of maybe bump out, Jimmy Graham and and not that, OJ not, Howard not that I could wanna, go to a different team and end up flashing right. somewhere. Not that mm-hmm. I want to hate on any of these guys in particular, but I just don't see Jimmy Graham making no. the this list at all next year. And that some of that has to do with the player. I'm and even if he does, he won't be on many of my teams. I want to. I want to. I'm not even from a dynasty perspective. I just want a younger, more upside good play. If I'm going to punt, yeah, for sure. I want an upside play. And he's to me, he's yeah. a, he's a he's a decent floor. That's fine. But I, I don't feel excited about taking that guy, Jimmy Graham. No. Um, I guess in, in, until next week, I, I don't have anything else to say, Chris. I mean, what about you? Uh, just a little housekeeping. Uh, give us a follow on twitch.tv forward slash amazing fantasy football. 
Um, we're, we're not doing. We're not going to be doing any streaming really until draft time. What like the draft? Yeah. So look but, forward to April. Mm-hmm. But we'll we'll be doing some streaming here once we get closer to the the 2021 NFL season. You mm-hmm. as always, you can email us uh, an amaz- at amazing ffb at gmail.com you can give exactly. us some you can give us some some comments um suggestions you can get it you, some suggestions you can tell us to go screw you know like <laughs> um and but the the positive thing is that you could join our discord server too we I just have a discord server a, we're uh, trying to it's oh. it's kind of quiet right now because it's not football season obviously but you know, we're hoping once, um, you know, preseason starts up and everything, we can get some more people in there and we can help uh, help each other out, you know, maybe join some leagues if you want. I know I certainly would love to have a league with all of our fans, listeners. I really like I like listeners. I don't think anyone's really a fan of me. Um, I'm certainly not a fan Speak of myself. Speak for yourself. Oh, thanks, buddy. Um <laughs> Uh, anyways no yeah i'll, uh, yeah. I'll include a discord link to, uh you know a, a everlasting one if you will uh to join it's not everlasting the con- that's the thing they lie about it even though when you change it well anyway i will attempt to leave a discord link in the comments below um i'm sorry there was one other thing you mentioned that i just forgot what i was going to say about oh well it was basic I believe, housekeeping. I believe Chris would like to uh, plug his his Twitch channel. Oh yeah, too. oh yeah. Um, and I usually do include this in the description. Also, I do a PC uh, build, a gaming PC building and flipping content. A little bit of gaming here and there. Uh, Hardware Dynasty. I'll include that in the comments below. Uh, that's at twitch.tv forward slash Hardware Dynasty. And I build PCs mm-hmm. live a lot lately. So let's. Go and check, sometimes check I join in on the chat, and I am in the color commentary. Which means I just make raunchy jokes. <laughs> but we have a good time. Uh, oh, we hope, do have a good time. And I'm hoping to get some YouTube content put together in this fantasy off season Because I think we've already shown that. Oh, that's the last thing I wanted to mention was um, uh, we've been honing in a little bit in the off season. Obviously, we have more free time during the week because it's the off season, And therefore, you've seen some improvements in the show. And I think we want to get to a real good spot right before August. Uh, so you guys can see some of this. Uh, some of this uh, production for sure and i uh, we have another episode coming up in, uh, next week which next will be week. about some players that um, that could make the jump jump and moving af- forward after that we're gonna have an episode on offensive lines and head coaches mm-hmm. changing and then it's free agency out. time it'll almost bring us right up to free agency so yeah Thanks for tuning in, everyone. As always, you can if you are listening to this in podcast format, you can check us out on YouTube at just search Amazing Fantasy Football for YouTube. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hey, thank you. You can click that little bell to subscribe. And you can also check us out on pretty much anywhere you can find a podcast except for Apple, iTunes, Currently. whatever they're calling themselves. I got to I got to work on that later today. So we're we're getting there. We're getting there, folks. Until then, have a good day, everyone. Keep wearing your masks and stay safe.